Hey y'all, welcome to the Whiskey Warehouse. We are low quality, low budget, best bourbon reviews on YouTube. Not just bourbon, but whiskey too. Yeah, that too. All whiskey. All whiskey. Except for that stuff your uh, your uncle you know, makes in his basement. That's, you know. That's moonshine. No, 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 that other stuff that he makes in his basement. Uncle Lush, Nears? It on it's on the skin. You're not Uncle like Nearest, though. <laughs> no, we love Uncle Nearest. You guys are great. What was the other one? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, uh, Old Granddad? No, no, Old Granddad. <laughs> that shit from Kroger, $6. That's bottle. what I'm talking about. Oh, no, 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 no. I know what you're talking about. Old Old, old Dan Tucker, the, the dirty, dirty butt fucker. fucker. <laughs> yes. Woo! Nailed it. If Good you want to see the review, <laughs> link I'll it. link it up here. <laughs> Yeah, we are the low budget, the most low budget bourbon and whiskey channel on YouTube. Recording with an iPhone success. Yes. Looking to get a camera soon. If you guys like to help out, that'd be great. Yep. Um, yeah, we are reviewing Bellmead Cast Strength. Yes, this is a. Uh, <clears throat> you know what is great about this is it's not just one barrel that it comes out of. This one is actually a uh, a mix. I think it's of six different barrels. Oh yeah. Yeah. Huh. You know, I I said I didn't know anything about this. But I feel like I read some stuff, and I was like, mm -hmm. now it's coming out. There you go. We're on the camera. We're live. Not live, but you get what we're saying. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Bellmead, legendary. At least this one is. Uh, I got this in Virginia for 60, 63 bucks. 63 like with tax. <laughs> yeah. It was, uh, and... and this is a uni This is considered a unicorn bourbon here in Ohio. Uh, you won't find it on the shelves. I, I could not find Bellmead to save my life here. And then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. I go out to Virginia. They have their regular bourbon. And they have the cast strength, which uh, there's also the the premier uh, Bellmead bourbon would be uh, their single barrel cast strength, oh, which yeah? is released, I think, once a year. Oh, wow. Yeah. So out of Nashville, Tennessee, the home of country music. Actually, it's the home of music, basically. Every, every, every kind of genre you can think of comes out of, out of Nashville. But mostly country. Yeah, mostly country. Oh, well, what are you going to do? Figure it out. Turn off the radio. <laughs> I mean, I, I like it, but, you know, it might not be your cup of tea. No, it's not. Uh, let's see. It says that they opened in 1853. Pretty old. Interesting deal, considering that they've been sourcing from MGP. Yeah, it's you guys been interesting. Uh, yeah, you've been open that long, you're still up. Uh, Maybe they started on their own, they switched to film, or the save, MGP like, after the Prohibition? Cost or something? I don't know. No, no, no. I, I don't, we'll have to look and see. How long MGP's been in business? I, do I don't know that think they're, they're, like, they're they were the in business bill. back then. There's no way. I don't think so. No, no. they're the Mash Bill uh, epicenter. They they basically provide for any new starting company or or for companies like this who just they they, they might whatever. have been one of the distillers that got closed down during Prohibition because I know only there there's only a, a few distillers still operating because of medicinal purposes. Yeah. So maybe they had to reopen doors after Prohibition. Source through MGP, and that's why they're MGP now. Maybe. Maybe. That, that'd be a good little bit of information. When you get home and you edit this video, yeah, uh, let's uh, put at the bottom here, when MGP opened, and we'll figure out why they are still kind of going through MGP when they should be, by now, off the tee. Okay. You know, something good. All right. I don't even really know what to expect because every time I've had this, I've been drunk. So is it higher proof than the? Uh, yes. Smoke bag? Yep. One sixteen. What's the other one? One fourteen. One fifteen point eight. Oh, so not by much. No, not by much at, at all. all. Very. If uh, we'll link that smoke wagon somewhere up here. Yep. You guys can watch that. That that's uh, that's some good juice. Very good juice. Yep. All right, uh, Nick, you wanna? 
do the pours. One thing that I do have one gripe, really quick, with uh, with them. This is a beautiful top. I like that. I was looking beautiful at that. top, nice wood, right? You got a real pour. Belmead. Oh no, they don't. <sighs> Come on, guys. Yeah. You. This is a unicorn bourbon. I need you guys to provide us with some real corks. All right, this is imperative. I understand cost of cost efficiency. The bottle's sixty bucks. They yeah, should be able to it should be a, a real cork, cork man. It should be real Come cork. On. I understand you guys are trying to save some money, but you're putting a nice. I would imagine this is probably oak topper on here. Yeah, why have a nice topper but it? And, and a shitty fake cork. cork. I mean, what are you guys fucking bullet? Figure it out. <laughs> No shit. I mean, bullet's good. Don't get me wrong, but I'm not paying sixty, sixty something dollars for for bullet. You're not kidding. I do like the uh, the design on the label with the two horses, and then uh, it's got the cask in the middle. It's beautiful, and I like the color scheme: red and black, and gold. Right, right. Hard as a rock. I mean it. The bottle itself, and I showed you the the picture before, where it had the same kind of uh, ceiling on it as Pappy Van Winkle does, and and fucking uh, Weller Antique. Yeah, has the same type of deal, mm -hmm. where it's the nice gold thing all the way around, mm -hmm. little label on the top, and then uh, you know you pull it off, and you got a real cork. This disappointment. It is at its finest. The cork, yeah, yeah. for sure. I shouldn't be disappointed in the cork. Well, let's see if the bourbon makes up for it. Yeah. All right. Before we do this, because we screwed it up in the last video, expectations. Yeah, expectations. I've never had any Bell Mead product, so I do not know what to expect. I'm expecting a... The only thing that I've noticed when I drank it when I was drunk was bubblegum. Bubblegum? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the, my expectation is that I'm going to get maybe a little bit of caramel, and then uh, a little bit more of like some oakiness, uh, oaky smoky stuff coming out of there. But we'll see. We will see. So let's go ahead and kind of... How's our legs looking, Nick? It's kind of hard to tell because we had to wash out our glasses. No, no, right there. They're coming down. A little thick. They're quick. A little bit, yeah. Color. Same. I would honestly say about the same as the smoke wagon. It's just a little lighter. It's similar, though. No, I think, I think we're darker here, Nick. Sure. I'm pretty sure. Maybe. Just look look in the camera. Look at how much, like, we're like a shade darker. Oh, you're right. It's almost brown. Yep. Okay. So a little darker <sighs> than the smoke wagon. Totally different smell than the smoke wagon. Definitely. I just, I'm greeted with alcohol. I do get that bubble gum that you're talking about. Yeah. I get a little mint. I don't. I, I I know you're getting it. I don't get it. I get like a nice like little hint of maple. Yeah. But I don't get the brown sugar. There's something that is in there that I'm not. Maybe some citrus. Yeah. 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 I would say so. Maybe like honey. Yeah. Like it, a just... like a honey orange sweater sort of thing it's really dark which is surprising I mean, it's light and almost floral but yeah see how it tastes it'd be interesting to pair this with like Blanton's or something like that and kind of see which one is it does have floral notes yeah. I'm agreeing with that that's mm -hmm. why I'm saying this okay. Blanton's is a very floral bourbon yes it is <sighs> you ready? yep ready. cheers buddy cheers God dang. The first thing I get is pepper. Lots of pepper. Holy shit, it's like eating a jalapeno. But it's like eating ground pepper. It starts to work away. Well that's mostly alcohol too. It's working away and I'm getting like I hate saying this. Oak and peanut. Oh my god, that's like even though it's just a little bit higher in proof, it's it's like it's much hotter than the yeah, uh, God damn. smoke wagon. It is. That smoke wagon was just like neat, smooth all the way through. This is like aggressive. Yeah, it's, but that is the first nice. taste, though. Yeah, it's so. it's nice. It's I think it's what we're looking for in a in a barrel proof. Um, but 
at the same time, like, the ECBP, since I've had it, since we've been drinking a while now, mm -hmm. uh, has smoothed out a lot more than, than the first time we had it when it was, like, drinking freaking fire. Right. This, uh, is... Hmm. Forget about it. We'll, we'll, we'll cover that another time. We'll probably do, like, a battle of the BPs or something like that. We should. Sure. Blind tasting. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I know, I know we can do that, too. Yeah. Because, uh... The uh, Whiskey Tribe, Whiskey Vault side channel, where they do all their funny shit. They just did a um, celebrity whiskey review, blind tasting, hmm. of Max McConaughey's, of... Um, you talk about, rare, or not rare breed, uh, Long Branch. Long Branch, and they had, they had several others of other celebrities, like Bob Dylan has a whiskey. Yeah, Heaven's Door. Yeah, Heaven's Door. <clears throat> and then there's a couple, Conor McGregor's Irish whiskey. Uh, I forget what, what his is. Uh, uh, proper, Metallica proper has their, 12, their yeah. own too. The Metallica does. Blackened. That's Metallica. Blackened, yep. That was actually, um, that was finished in um, Brandy Burroughs, I believe. Interesting. I, I think I've had it, but it's been, it was peppery. They said it was very peppery. Yeah. But they, they liked it. But anyway, um, how they did their blind taste test thing is that they wrote a number on the bottle, or on the bottom of the, each Glen bottle. Glen. Or of bottle. each bottle. Wow. And then they put so that they, same number under each one here and then they mix them up. They poured it into like probably uh, kind of like my uh, barrel bottle. And blank bottles. No. No. They, they pour each, they, they write the number on the bottom mm -hmm. and then they pour them into the Lincarians and then put the corresponding number on the bottom of the Lincarians. Okay, and then they come in. Then, then, then they mix them up. Okay. Yeah. So they don't know which is which, but... I like it. Yeah, and yeah. then they uh, write I mean, down have, which they think that it, we have Cassandra it is. And, and, and Sarah, Sarah yeah. so they can just come out here and pour them for us, right. and we can go from there. My thing would be that I could totally see them doing. They're gonna like we set up four bourbons up here, yeah, and they just pour them all in a row, right? And we're like, <laughs> oh man, this one's got to be this. And we're looking like fucking idiots. Out here. <laughs> oh well, what are you gonna do? Anyway, let's get back to this second taste. Yeah, definitely need to do a blind tasting though. Yes, definitely. Mm, 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 mm. I still get that pepper. Yeah, it's strong in pepper, but salted caramel. Yeah. Maybe a little bit of green <sighs> apple. Ooh. What is that? I don't know what that is. Some There's kind of, something in there. Maybe some kind of dark fruit? Dude, I wish I knew. There's something in there that I do not know what it is. I feel you. That's good. I would say that we probably should have started with this mm. today. Why? Smoke wagon is uh. That's so overwhelmingly peppery, man. It is. It's like it. Like I said, it's like eating a jalapeno. That's all the front is, even after the second and yep. third taste. Yep. It's uh, it's heavy jalapeno. It's it, you know it has a lot of flavor. It is complex. There's stuff in there that I just I want to say it does get floral notes. It does. It, it's it gets notes. away. There's definitely citrus, a little bit of mandarin orange mm -hmm. in there, and a slight bit of what seems like uh, organic cherry, not your synthetic cherry, but you know the yeah you know the fruit, the raw cherry. No, it's good. Very mild. Uh, I don't think this one's gonna score as high as the last one did. Mm, no. Is it unicorn status? I think because people like cask strengths and they like uh, barrel proofs, this yeah. is gonna be a unicorn status bourbon. Uh, would it, should it be? I don't think so. No. This does not stack up to, uh, <clears throat> Elijah Craig BP. This doesn't stack up to, uh, the Smoke Wagon. Even Rare Breed, man. Yeah, doesn't, I won't even touch that, uh, what's the other one? The, uh, Kentucky Spirit. Is that a barrel proof? No, 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 but I'm saying, just in general. Oh, like, okay. It doesn't. That's not even a. That's not even a unicorn, really. Kentucky Spirit, you can you can find some places anywhere in Kentucky. But some, this, yeah. literally, I've been looking for this for years, and when I found it out in in Virginia, I was like, oh shit, this has got to be like the best bourbon that I'm gonna buy. So I went down to the distillery and picked up Blanton's. Yeah. No problem. Blanton's is delicious, but this it uh, is. Blanton's beats this out, I think. For sure. If I go in for my last tasting, Same. I'll let it sit on the tongue for a little bit longer. I'm gonna do a couple tastings. Pepper. Fucking pepper. Every time. It's pepper and it's very peanut. consistent. 
Dude, I'm hitting peanut like hardcore right now. Giving away to like plastic. If I look for it, I can see that peanut oil a little bit. Uh, I went, it went to plastic on this last one. This one's going to get a under under unicorn status score from me. Where are you uh, scoring this at, bud? Oh, you go first. I'm still trying to process. I've had better. I've had worse. Yeah. Um, I've had a lot better, actually, and we just had a lot better. Yeah. Damn. This one doesn't even crack 90 for me. That's disappointing. It is. It's extremely disappointing. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, this one's going to go down 85. Mm -hmm. I expect a lot more from cast strength, especially if you're mixing it, and especially if I can't find it. I'm looking for absolute deliciousness. I want mind-blowing results. But this, uh, it's almost mind-blowing that it doesn't stack up to that. For the price, you yeah. think it'd be a lot better. Absolutely. <clears throat> I expect Blanton's or above on anything that I'm paying. It's the same price point as Blanton's. Yeah. yeah. I could have got a whole bottle there of should be a This, for the taste alone, it should be about 40. Mm -hmm. Color is beautiful, though. Yeah. Color's beautiful. The nose is nice. It's the kind of cork. Come on, guys. Yeah. The cork is kind of throwing me off. Uh, Flavor-wise, you guys, that's where you guys uh, tanked it. Too much pepper. Yep. Way too much. I wonder if that's like a rice spice attribution. Or if that's just like a, I think it can be. I'm pretty yeah. sure, yeah. Peppery is, is more rye than... I'm, I'm right than there with you, I think. I'm at an 84. Should not be a uh, a unicorn. I scored Weller Specials are higher than this. Oh, Weller Specials are higher. Uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, you saw all the, <laughs> all the bottles that I finished. Man. Yeah, it's fucking... Dude, <laughs> I'll... <laughs> Don't get me started, because I scored that Weller Special Reserve higher than I scored Antique. I know you did. And we did an episode I on love that. Special Reserve. Special That's, Reserve versus Antique. I'm, I'm glad that we're seeing that more. And oh, I, yeah. I, it's like, just all freaking, over. You know what's great is you go into O'Brien's and it's like six boxes, six boxes deep. Of it. Oh. And sometimes a big one. <laughs> I haven't For seen only it. 50 bucks. Dude, I haven't seen it once in Virginia. Not once, because in Virginia well, they're doing, they're going through the same stuff that we were going through like a year ago, where everyone's taking Buffalo Trace products except yeah. for the Ancient Age, which no one knows about. The it's five star. Rejected Blantons. Yeah. Tech, five ten star. star. Ten star. Ten star. Yes. Rejected Blantons. That stuff is good. It's a good go-to for cheap. You'll that, see that that review yeah. will come later. Yeah. Well, that and the uh, Heaven Hill Green is a good go-to bourbon, cheap if you're in Kentucky. Dude. Oh. Don't get me started. What? We're going to go into Evan Hill, and we're going to talk about Evan Williams, and that Evan Williams green label, even though it's 80 proof. It's okay. It was a lot better than I expected. I expected swill, because I read every review that there is on that, and everyone's like, it's gross. It's disgusting. No. It's okay. It's... It's drinkable. It's decent. It's yeah. very decent. It's I, would, kinda... I would take that over a lot of, honestly, other bourbons. Really? Over like Jim Beam. Every day. I, I can, hate I, Jim Bean. Jim Bean's not. Yeah. I would take it over Jack Daniels. I would take it over, uh, what is it? The Old Crow. I haven't had that. But There's that's a, a, that's like but, budget, budget bourbon. Yeah, but that's what it was supposed to be, is yeah. budget, budget bourbon. What's the lowest And line? a lot of people were taking Jim Beam over the Green Lake. That's a close call. Take I'd, I'd have to do yeah, we'll, side we'll, by we'll side comparison. Well, uh, when you guys watch this later in time, we'll figure out a way to link whatever. What? When we do the green label review of Evan Williams, so we'll end up doing it at, at some point in time. Is Green label, black label, white label, uh, 1783, and then uh, Evan Williams single barrel. And then hopefully we'll get into stuff that's done at the distillery. Yeah. Which would be Evan good. Williams episode or something. Yes. But I'd like to review each one of them individually too. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, guys. Nick, what's your score? You said 84? 84. Right behind you. There. I don't have anything else to say about this. Massive disappointment. Finish wasn't long enough for me. Uh, too much pepper. Honestly, like my tongue still feels like... Kind of shot. Yeah. i got a it's palate cleanse. Overwhelming. I would not recommend this bottle for the price. Does not get the Whiskey Warehouse stamp of approval. Does not, sadly. Sorry, Bill Mead. I think this is our first bourbon that hasn't stacked up to what we were hoping for. I know. I was, I was, I was hoping for big things. Yeah. Did not do it. Not smooth enough. It was very harsh. My recommendation is to uh, light up on the pepper and get a real cork. Yep. 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 
Yep, yep, yep. yep. We'll see you guys on our next review. Stay tuned. Peace, bitches. Peace, bitches.